on every side. Strap yourselves down. The G effect gets pretty intense from this point on as we reach our destination. The basic tracks have all been laid out. We have our markers in the timeline showing us each section of the piece. Now we're going to insert one measure at the beginning so we can have an intro. After selecting all the tracks, we click Insert, Time, Measures. We need to make sure that we slide the markers, meter changes, tempo changes, as well as the events in the track. Now you'll see the one measure being inserted. Let's add another instrument for this very first measure. Here's a great one. Orchestral glissando, down, minor third. We need to add another MIDI track in Sonar, and make sure that its output is going to ARIA, and that it's tuned to channel 11. As always, we want to label the track so we can keep things organized. Now we arm the track for recording. We're going to come in on beat 3. Let's add a timpani to beef up the percussion. In the piano roll view, we can see as many tracks at a time as we want. Notice this has a recorded roll, triggered by one note. Let's record some volume data, so the roll can swell. I'm using my expression pedal, which sends out controller 11. You can use either CC1 or CC11 for volume. With snap 2 turned off and holding down control, we can touch that recording up by hand. We're fixing up all the tracks as things occur to us. For instance, let's smooth out the transition right there between the chords in the easy string patch. Clicking on the track header selects all the notes. Now, with snap off, grab one note, drag to the right. There, that's better. They're all slightly longer. In the ARIA control panel for easy strings, let's also play with the release. Make it longer. So the sounds fade out more slowly. It gives us more legato. The default color for this track makes it hard to see things. So in Track Properties, I choose blue, and now I can see those velocity values. I'll lower them later. Click the plus sign and you get another controller pane. Up in the menu, type in the MIDI controller you want. We're going to record CC1 now, which controls the balance between strings, woodwinds, and brass in this particular patch. I'm pointing to the CC1 being recorded. As it increases, you can hear the woods. And at the end, you go all the way up to hear the brass. We need to understand the expression switch, which is new with Instant Orchestra. The default setting is general MIDI mode. That's where velocity controls volume. The softer the keystroke, the softer the note. In GPO mode, the volume isn't controlled by velocity, but how slowly or fast the note starts is. For this project, we're staying with general MIDI mode. Let's also turn the stereo stage on full. Let's turn the record metronome off and record some CC1 volume data for the brass track. CC1 or CC11 controls volume for both general MIDI and GPO mode. So GM has two volume controls, but CC1 is the fluctuating one. We're adding another controller pane, and this time asking for a different type channel aftertouch. That controls vibrato in this instrument and a lot of the Garretton instruments. Use it only on sustaining notes starting about halfway through. Let's look at these controls in the ARIA control panel. CC17 will control the speed. This produces a wavering sound which might be more like tremolo. We add another controller pane in the piano roll view, this time controller 17, so we can record varying degrees of speed. After recording data with our controllers, we can always go back in and draw in more precise data. Remember to have the grid off and to hold control. Remember the MIDI faders in Sonar control the faders in ARIA. Right-click and we can arm them to record automation. 
I've recorded some moves on the Easy Strings track, and now I'm going to record some on the Snappy Brass track. This is to keep the instruments in better balance throughout the whole piece. You can see the automation appear as I move the slider on my controller. I'm getting a bigger range of volume control this way. In versions of Sonar before X1, you had to make sure you were using the right tool. The envelope tool is for working with envelopes. The selection tool is for working with clips. The default key binding is for E to select between the two tools. With the envelope tool selected, we want to fix this automation. The brass was too soft. Lasso all of them. You can move the whole envelope up. Okay, and that can be louder. And the ending notes could be louder. Now we're layering in more brass instruments to be triggered by that same MIDI track. I've put several more patches in on channel 2. We're going to change their pitch bend range. I'm turning pitch bend off on snappy brass. On the other two, I'm giving them the full octave range. I'm using my pitch wheel to show what happens. For the first statement of the theme, we'll keep the brass in the same octave. And then for the repeat, we'll use our pitch wheel so that the two new voices are an octave lower. And there you can see that little bit of pitch wheel data. Since pitch bend can go up or down, zero point is at the middle of the pane. It can be drawn in, just like any data. There we would be going down to normal. I've added the big chord to MIDI channel 1. It responds to CC1 as volume, so it will come in there as one swells. And the easy patch is switching to brass. Using the earth drum track as an example, we're going to start adding different amounts of reverb to each instrument's track. These are the kind of settings that will keep changing as we develop the mix. In the effects window, we can see I've chosen Concert Hall 1. I've widened the width and played with these controls until I liked the results. Let's try some different settings in the controls panel. I want the stereo stage on. The brightness knob emphasizes the attack on the drums. Let's try some more saturation. Turning the EQ on, I want to tame the low frequencies. That's fine for now. I've added a new patch to add to the transition into the key change. I've automated the panning so it moves between the speakers. Now, for that same passage, I'm recording a cymbal roll which responds to volume data. I've added another string patch for the final section 4. That way we can still have some strings when the easy strings patch is on brass. And finally, I've added trumpets attack on the brass channel 2. I'm detuning it to add a chorusing effect. And in the same way, I've added bones attack on the low brass channel. Having instruments share the same MIDI channel is another way of getting instant largeness with Instant Orchestra. So we have one instance of ARIA completely filled with instruments. MIDI controller data and velocities can be edited for each track. And then with every control available to us, we can mix down the results. Coming up is the final chapter. Taking our Instant Orchestra project with us, we'll land on planet Mix. <laughs>